Hey Team YouTube, haven't posted a video in a goodly while. Things change, and interests change, and hobbies change, and that sort of business. But uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a tandem bike that I have been restoring for a bicycle tour coming up. The other rider on the bicycle is going to be one of my brothers. Let's get started. Anyhow, Team YouTube, this uh, burly tandem I believe is about a 1995. The fellow I bought it from wasn't exactly sure when it was manufactured, but based on the components and things like that, anywhere from early to mid 90s. It has the Shimano Diore XT uh, rear derailleur, and a Dior, uh, the front derailleur is a Diore LX. It has specialized uh, cranks, um, made by Sugino, of course. Uh, most cranks are. Uh, especially specialty cranks and uh, then it also has what I wanted to upgrade. The original package came with the Shimano uh, cantilever brakes and a standard Shimano brake lever and bar end brakes. A lot of people haven't seen these unless you've kind of lived through the whole bike here but they literally would plug in with a screw here, a tensioning screw would sit and you would shift from bar ends. Of course, this was the improvement they made from the 80s and before where you had down tube shifters. Of course, this bike never had down tube shifters. It uh, is a little newer than that. So, of course, this is the steel frame era where you can find a lot of components that will still work with it. Moving on. So, Team YouTube, this is not going to be an exhaustive how-to. Um, people like RJ the Bike Guy and, of course, the wonderful Calvin Jones at Park Tool has covered any video you could possibly want. Also, a GCN does a good, good job, too. And uh, so I upgraded to uh, Shimano uh, Sora shifters. I had to find, of course, something that would work with a 3x8, a 8-speed in the back, a triple crank up front, and... Uh, so this, this came up on uh, eBay. Of course, uh, Shimano and others made uh, stuff that's 3x8 compatible, but these came up. They got good reviews. I like them. Uh, the one thing I was really looking for is these have a thumb trigger on them, and I have a Campanolo equipped bike that I like that. I didn't want all of the levers to be kind of buried either behind it or whatever. I don't know if I'm totally in love with the shifting from the lever yet, but um, it's, it's really getting... It's getting second nature, so I'm pretty happy about that. So let's talk about the upgrades. Hey Team YouTube, I lied. Let's not talk about their upgrades. Let's talk about some other upgrades here uh, first. So this was not the original handlebar. The original handlebar was first person who was quite a bit taller and they needed a bigger, or they had a big, huge, like 160 millimeter drop on the bars. I did upgrade the bars and a quill stem. And interestingly enough, this bicycle um, it had a spacer in it because this is an old 22.2 uh, quill stem and I didn't know that otherwise I'd have got a 25.4 uh, quill stem. Uh, but off on the bike, of course, I went totally modern. I went with, uh, I think I believe they're called threadless stems and then the stem adapter here. It's an 80 millimeter reach and a 26.0 bar and I already put the handlebar tape on. I, I just went with basic black, but uh, you know, obviously there's some really good videos out there on how to do it. And of course I followed those to get, you know, kind of the best advice on how to do it. I think my wrap job is great, but it's serviceable for now. Because the bike's about 25 years old, I elected to go ahead and make everything new uh, on the bike just because the cables were a uh, fair bit tarnished and rusty. I elected to go with, and of course this is not an endorsement or anything, this is my own money, uh, with Jaguar brand, the Pro Shift uh, Kit here. I love saying shift kit because I mean, I think of cars, but a uh, uh, different subject. And so what's in it and why did I choose this? So first of all, this is the only thing I could find directly that had cables, steel cables, long enough for a tandem. And to be blunt, uh, it was either the rear derailleur cable, I'm getting to that, 
or the rear brake cable. One of them was only about six or eight inches, uh, you know, <laughs> in, excess, in, in excess of length needed. So it's not like they gave you a whole, a whole lot. And obviously for a single person bike, this it would be overkill. But uh, let's talk about what you get with it. So you obviously get the uh, green or whatever color you want carrier cable, as well as the steel cables with the uh, particular ball ends. Of course, this one says it's compatible with uh, SRAM and Shimano. And you also get a cable section that's finished, and that's for the rear uh, derailleur. And you get small parts, which I want to talk about real quickly, because each one of these has based a specific need. So um, you have sealed end caps, you have lined end caps, you have uh, the hooded end cap. Uh, you get some of these to help for, with your cable management. Uh, these for where you might rub the frame. And then this uh, housing connector, which wouldn't be used on a modern bicycle. And then some uh, cable donuts, something you just string on the cable where it might smack uh, the steel, the bare cable would smack the frame. And where do those go on the bike? Let's find out. Starting from the front of the bike, they recommend a sealed end cap to go into the brifter. And after that, you would put one of these doodads where the cable might rub the paint. Inside of the guide here, they recommend one of those with the, the um, uh, you know, small end on it. And I'm gonna get down and show you underneath the bike. It's kind of cool. Something that's cool about this bike is there's actually three uh, bosses for handling different things. But if you come down here, now we're going on to the front bottom bracket. Right there is just a, a steel guideway that's a boss, a, a welded on boss is part of the frame. It could be braced on, I guess, part of the frame. And everything shoots back. And then you have that kind of more standard plastic guide that you'd see on a lot of you know, more commonly on a, a single rider bike. So moving on, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and get back up off the floor. So here we have another one of those caps that has the, the thin piece that goes to one of these. And then you have the cable. And I decided I'd like to, to cut my cable to length. And right here would be a sealed end cap that goes into the derailleur. Obviously, they include a pre-finished one in the kit. I just didn't like how it seemed like too short to really bend around and reach. So I elected to cut my own and uh, it, it works out great. So that is the rear derailleur and the front very much the same other than you only have really from all the way from the front derailleur, you really only use one piece of cable and then all of the accessories. So. Let's talk about the tools needed, uh, or at least the tools that I used for the job. Any, any brake or shift cable job requires you to cut a, a plastic cable with a, a lined interior with, with metal uh, uh, weaving in it, and also to cut uh, the steel brake or shift cables. Here you can see there's that when there's kind of a welded finished one that's the, the, the end that you would feed through or whatever. And then here's just kind of a blunt cut one. What did I use to manipulate the brake uh, housings and cables? Well, I will show you. And I'm sure Park Tool has wonderful tools for this, uh, but when you have tools lying around, it just feels like it's not right not to use them. So I have a Nipex cutter that I have used for many, many things. This is essentially a quarter inch compact bolt cutter is what it is probably is more expensive than the equivalent park tool. I found it to work quite well in cutting the housings and you know, obviously the cables. And because it's really hardened jaw or whatever, it cuts very straight and I don't get fraying cables when I cut the cable. Um, I also use just a standard pliers to kind of square back out, you know, kind of pinch the cable where it was kind of cut flat and, and kind of get it back round again. And then of course I do use a pick or a, you know, hook and pick set, just what, get 495 for five of these at uh, Harbor Freight. And uh, I found that my tools worked very well and I didn't uh, have anything where I really struggled 
to uh, make a good clean cut. Oh, one last thing. Because uh, obviously in my experience in the uh, wire harness industry, uh, I just use a standard electrical crimper down where I need to do crimp on the little doo -doo -doo end cap. Worked really good. And the crimp, it's very solid. And it was just a single, single squeeze with that. And didn't feel the need to, you know, I, whenever I see people use pliers on these, I always go back to my wiring, wiring harness experience and say, at least use one of these, you know, home shop ones and kind of get close. But uh, that's my own rant. Let's talk about the other cables. Okay, Team YouTube, next verse. Same as the first. Uh, this is the Rode Pro brake cable kit. Again, the reason for purchasing this one is it gives you plenty of steel cable and uh, plenty of the housing. So I don't have any housing left over. I must have thrown that out. Um, one way you can really tell the difference between brake and shift, and this is maybe it's intuitively obvious to anybody, uh, is that the uh, uh, one, the uh, brake, because it's like power, you're carrying power essentially, you want to stop the bike, um, it's bigger in diameter than the shift. The shift, if you think about like power and signal for uh, wiring harnesses, signal wires are always, almost always, eh, no generalizations, smaller than power wires, which are usually much bigger because they have to carry power and not just a signal. So again, what you get here, kind of the same thing and they have the same exact uh, types of uses. Let's just go over to the bike and take a look-see. Hey Team YouTube, so you know I, uh, I jumped ahead. I actually wrapped my handlebars yesterday, but the first thing you start out with going under the brifter is that flexible cable section that goes under here and stops about there and then comes out. And in the instructions, you just go right in with that uh, flexible cable housing to go into your brake. There's no, none of those little caps or things that you use. You just start with that, you push it in, and keep on going. The simplest brake in the world here is the front brake. Um, it's literally the housing, and then you stop it, and Jaguar recommends the use of what, what they call one of their pop fittings, even if the fitting on the brake housing is looks like it'll hold the wire just fine. I suppose they have their reasons. Pop. There you go. And uh, of course moving down to my brand new Tektro RX6 uh, V-brakes. And uh, I'll talk about these later but I'm really impressed with these. Um, moving on. Let's do the other brake. The rear brake. The flexible housing into the plastic and then we have the protector for the paint. And then we have what, I'm going to look up the name here just real quick so I don't keep fumbling here. It is the lined end cap. Back to the bike. So a lined end cap goes here. And because the brakes cables can sometimes, when you hit them real hard, they can kind of bounce back just like boing, boing, boing. I elected to use some donuts here. Keep going back and back and there's a lot of potential cable stretch on this, but supposedly these Jaguar kits are pre-stressed or pre-stretched uh, cables. And here we have another one of those adapters. And then we have here on the noodle for the uh, V-brake, we have another one of those pop adapters. And God, those black V-brakes really look sexy on this bike. What can I say? Hey, Team YouTube, not to put too fine of a point on it, but in the directions, there are these easy bend segments, or what they're called. These are the things that start at the lever housing. Those are actually integrated with the, the brake cable, you know, the green or black cable or whatever it is. They're, they don't come as separate pieces, and you get, you know, many feet of brake uh, housing to go with them, and then you just cut it off as needed. And... Uh, the rest of this stuff, I don't even think I use some of this. Um, obviously, I used the pop end caps, and I used um, the open end cap. I don't even believe I used that for the brakes. Um, the directions here, even though they look long and cumbersome, they're multi-language, but they do a pretty good job of covering what goes where. And I would have to say, following their recommendations, 
I have tested the bike a number of times and it, uh, it feels good. It feels really good. Very pleased with this so far. Hey Team YouTube, I just wanted to talk about the V-brakes real quick. Why upgrade from cantilever? You know, sources in the know say, oh, well, you get the same tractive effort uh, with V-brakes that you would with a well-adjusted cantilever. And all I can say is, is that person hasn't ridden this particular bike, and um, it's quite possible you could with new pads, etc. But I did have new pads on the V-brake before I said, or on the uh, cantilever board, I said, you know what, uh, I can get a set of these for not a terrible amount of money and I really want my bike tour to be successful this summer and I need stopping power. This bike is going to have two riders on it. So we're talking 300 plus pounds of riders on it and we just need every advantage we could get. Now uh, this interestingly enough I think Burley was kind of forward thinking they do have a boss here uh, that would be for a disc brake. Uh, the challenge is I just don't want to move to disc brakes yet. And, surprisingly enough, when I was doing my research, the uh, Burley company in the late 90s, 99 or 2000, Tektro V-brakes were standard equipment on their tandems. So even they knew to move over and upgrade to the V-brake. Uh, the one thing I like about this particular model, it's an RX-6 from Tektro, is it has a pretty darn long pad. And that doesn't really mean a lot other than that, you know, I have the specific point area on the pad hopefully won't get as hot as if the pad was a bit shorter. So, uh, so the color theme for the bike <laughs> is I'm kind of sticking with the, the, obviously the blue frame and black, but I'm setting it off with some um, kind of that, 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 you know, electric green or lime green highlights, including the water bottles. And... I've also elected to uh, take matters into my own hands. These are old Minura uh, blue water bottle cages with spray paint because, hey, why not? It'll be fun. And uh, here's the original blue water bottle cage. So it, I guess this is just vanity. But, uh, you know, I wanted to keep with kind of the, you know, the derailleurs kind of have that black accent going and now that you know, with the brakes all, all together. The last stage is, of course, the seats. And in this, this bike originally came with whatever Burley had on them, but the previous owner put on Sel Bassano Vuelta in green shark skin. If this doesn't scream out 90s, I don't know what does. But uh, yeah, there you go. I'm thinking about recovering these, and uh, we'll see where that goes. It's possibly going to be a future YouTube video. Last thing, here is the Stoker Bar, and it still has a blue tape on it, and I elected to move to black because the blue up front tore after really only, um, you know, 10 or 15 hours worth of riding, and I was kind of disappointed. It's like, follow the directions and do everything right, and it still busts up on you. Not pleased by that, uh, but the rear Stoker Bar is a track bar it's 42 centimeters and then we also have this is a like a mountain bike stem but it works great for what we're doing on the bike obviously i'm going to upgrade this tape or i'm going to change this tape the tape worked great and back to to your basic black and uh i've ridden this with my stoker my brother and he is very pleased with how comfortable this is so i guess i'm going to go post this online and hope you all had fun with this as much as i did have a great day, YouTube. Hey, Team YouTube. I haven't posted a video in a goodly while. Things change, and interests change, and hobbies change, and that sort of business. But uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a tandem bike that I have been restoring for a bicycle tour coming up. The other rider on the bicycle is going to be one of my brothers. Let's get started. <laughs> 